Bisa mula bina kena turang dan meramah turun bunuh mana lewa Business house uh, Bible study Sehingga baga ruang buka And uh, bi kita bagi tugas yang nak kukuh mana dari Jisoo Yang ada sehingga bina kena dikuah Haleluya Awak boleh bina kata kukuh mana turang dan sehingga nindai Ni ukila ni Sehingga ni kuah dah Letara tiku kena nak masuk Power of prayer eh? And uh, tiku ngori na Topik lila ya Sehingga walang ni power of prayer me Dua dari lesu ni Indo telang ada subtopik Kita sabtu rawat di nampu pasoh prea, gua tu salah kita gua nak power prea. Atau mana tu wikit apa kita kaji nak tali nak ada nimbula, ada nimbangga ni mana turang buat Yesus Kristus yang sih kita kaji kuah. Aku nak suri tikian dan berlinda toso, tak kita bawa ke mana mana kalau di bawah lutamu yang sih kita kaji kuah. Mereka kaji lagi kamu tahu, kerana mereka bertanya ruat tolu, Holy Spirit, we welcome you in Jesus name, Hallelujah. So we welcome the Holy Spirit, our friend, our teacher, our counselor. And he is uh, our advocate uh, this wonderful afternoon, uh, 1 to 2 on Friday, the 16th of uh, July, 2021. The time is really rolling. The day it is really rolling. And uh, we praise God that we are going through challenging time. But one thing that we must remember that our God, Jesus, is still at the throne. So uh, um, welcome to uh, the... Um, Business House uh, Bible Study Program, Heritage Department, Archives Department, in Suba CWM, also in Suba FRU, to the CEO and all the managers, not forgetting the boys that are out there uh, in Japan and also in Hamilton, in New Zealand for the game tomorrow. Uh, we remember them in our thoughts. Hallelujah. Works Department Walu Bay, Utilities Walu Bay, and the Fisheries uh, uh, office in Walube, not forgetting FNU Samambula Hostel. You know, the hostel in Samambula, they normally have uh, regional students there, so uh, they are watching and listening to our program. So we welcome them in the mighty and the matchless name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Not forgetting to uh, welcome all of you that are connecting on this uh, platform to listen to the business house. And I take this time all the tal talagasi, all the tal tal, all the randinis, all the gasinlo to all the youth, those uh, that are watching live now and those that will watch later. I take this time to uh, welcome you in Jesus' name to the government of the day, the Excellency, uh, the Mr. President of Fiji, a retired uh, uh, Church Kondote and the family. We take this time to uh, greet you in the matchless name of our Lord Jesus Christ, not forgetting. Honorable Mr. Prime Minister and all the permanent secretaries and the ministers and also the opposition, the parliamentarian, this uh, afternoon I take this time to say welcome. Hallelujah. Not forgetting those that are watching from overseas and I believe uh, Northern Hemisphere, it's about one o'clock in the morning, so Bulaminaka, all the way from your homeland, uh, we take this time to greet you. Not forgetting our neighbors, New Zealand, Australia, Vanuatu, um, Solomon Island, Papua New Guinea, Nauru, Guam, those in the north, uh, Hawaii and uh, the Marshall Islands, not forgetting Kiribati, uh, Rotuma and Samoa and Tonga, not forgetting Niue and Rarotonga uh, this afternoon. Uh, wherever you're tuning from, uh, we take this time to greet you in the matchless name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, Heritage and Archives, CWM Hospital, FRU, Works Department, Utility Department and Fisheries all in Walu, Walu Bay. And uh, FNU, Samambula Hostel, uh, Nimbula Minaka, uh, this wonderful afternoon. I'll take this time to uh, go through um, our lesson, Power in Prayer, and uh, start again from number one. Uh, we talk about power of prayer, uh, what is prayer, and then we talk about what is prayer, the definition of prayer, the communication. It's uh, our speaking, our talking to God, our relationship with God and prayer is one of the essential part of our worship. You can't uh, deny that. And number one, power of prayer. Number one, uh, prayer is powerful because it's armor of God. Out of all the seven uh, um, armor of God, prayer is uh, the last one. And it's like an iron dome. And we all see how iron dome works uh, during the Gaza-Israel uh, conflict about a few months ago. So prayer is like that iron dome protects you. 
and uh, protects your family, protect those that are far away from you. It's very useful. That's why we say the power of prayer, number one, it's the armor of God. Also, we talk about number two, number two, power of prayer, uh, because prayer uh, can change things. Hallelujah. Regardless what you're facing in this life, it can change. Whatever you're going through right now, it can change. Especially this time. Some of us that we are watching from Hilton, we are watching from other hotels in the Western or in the Coral Coast or here in Suba, and you are in a quarantine or isolation. We take this time. It's, uh, it's the time that we focus on God. Regardless, positive or negative or waiting, it's immaterial. God can heal the sick. God can heal you from any sickness whatsoever. So that's why we need to rely on God. And power of prayer reflects that. And uh, it's a story on uh, Joshua chapter 10. When Joshua prayed to God and asked God, Hallelujah, don't allow the sun to, to go away or to set. I want to deal with my enemies first. So the Bible says the sun stood there for another whole day. So for another whole day for them, they mess at the 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. So for about 12 hours, the sun stands still in the middle of the air. Hallelujah. Because somebody asked, somebody prayed. You know, prayer can change things. You want things to be changed? You want the, the problem that you are facing to, to change, to come in your favor? Pray. There's nothing, absolutely nothing is impossible with God. Uh, we can do all the social distancing. We can do the masking. We can do even the vaccination. We can do all that. We have to do all that because that is the instruction from the mayor. Uh, ministry of uh, health it's it's correct to follow but hallelujah god is the ultimate protection in our life we can't take away that our god is our protection when everything else fail god will never fail and that's why the bible says in psalm 46 1 the lord is my refuge the lord is my strength he is the present helper in times of need Hallelujah. So whatever you're going through in this life, whatever you're going through in your zone, whatever you're going through in your family, husband and wife or something at home, hallelujah. Don't allow the COVID-19 to change the way that you are, that you serve God. So when we connected to God, when we wait on the Lord, when we seek His face, when we wait on Him, when we believe in Him, He will do miraculous things in our life. Hallelujah. You know, most of the time we fail so much. Most of the time we, we can't even reach the, the glorious of this God. We fall short of His glory nearly every day of our life. But does not take away God's performance and His miracle and His power into whatever we ask for. You ask me, and I'll answer you. You knock and I will open. Hallelujah. When uh, it's given to you because you ask. And the door will be open because you knock. You, you come into terms with the thing that you are searching for because you are searching for it. Regardless of what happened in your life, and regardless it does not happen, according to your will, according to your plan, our God is still at the throne. You must acknowledge that. Hallelujah. You must be happy that God answer your prayer. And sometimes when He answers our prayer, we don't like the answer that God will give to us. Does not mean that He's changed. Does not mean that He's uh, the turning His back on us. No. He is God and is waiting for someone that seek Him and seek Him diligently. A lot of people, when we serve God, we just want the good part of God. We just want the exciting part of God. But our God is omnidirection. It's omnipresence. So there are side of uh, His glory, side of His blessings, but there are also His side of holiness, the sign of the side of him that will rebuke us. He will speak to us direct and sometimes we will not like it. And sometimes he will speak to us 
through our wife, through our children, through our husband, and the people that they are close to us. God can use anybody to speak to us. It is our duty to listen. It's our duty to welcome him. Because I believe God wants us to be good. The Bible says, I alone know the plan I have for you. The plan to prosper you and never to harm you. And to give you a future that you hope for. That is the plan of God in our life. His plan is, is for us to receive goodness. It's never a plan of God for us to receive the curse, the death, the sickness. No. The Bible says, it is your iniquities. It is your sin that allow these things to come over your life. It is your sin that turn away, that separate you from the presence of God. God did not walk away from you. We walk away from God. See, our sin separate us from God. God can never and will never separate him from us. It is our sinful life that separate us from God. Because God is a holy God. So, in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, 2, and 3, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like a blowing of a violent and came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seems to be a tongue of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. Hallelujah. What, what seems like a tongue of fire. It's not a fire. It just seems like the warmth and the light. I already shared that in so many Bible studies that I share on this. That the light, which is a shining bright on your face, and the heat, hallelujah. And that's why sometimes when we pray, we sing, or even when we listen to the word of God, we feel the heat, we feel the warmth, hallelujah. Because his presence, that is his presence. So, God raise your level of your person. Okay. I talk on uh, the invitation to to uh, preach in uh, Welangi village in Tabiuni. I shared it last week. Hallelujah. When I told Randini that I want to go to go and preach because it, uh, it is an uh, invitation. Hallelujah. And I was excited to go. But because of uh, of the airports, the the sitting in the plane, it was a short notice, but still I want to go. And last week we were talking about, hallelujah, what happened? Four airports, three hotels, and one rental car. You will spend money because that is your person, your person to do the things of God. Hallelujah. Your prayer life will raise your level of passion. If you feel that you, that you are not committing to God like before, uh, you couldn't care less or maybe you've, you see your level of commitment, your level of prayer, your level of uh, watching the word of God, of listening to the word of God or even reading the word of God. You felt that it's drop or it's not like before. That means your person is decreasing. Hallelujah. Your, your person for the love for God is diluting. And I want to challenge our life today. Hallelujah. This is the time to raise our level of passion. The level of loving God. The level of commitment to God. How do you do that? Prayer. When you go and pray and pray and pray, you are building your communication. And when your communication with God, your talking with God, your relationship will also increase. Hallelujah. Your relationship is good and is well founded because your communication is good. Husband and wife that you are watching and listening, when you see that your relationship is diluting or maybe you are not uh, have that zealous, that closeness before, you check your comms. You check the way that you talk. You hardly talk nowadays. You can only talk by sending viber to one another or just, yes, bula, bode. There's no other conversation. There's no other telling story late at night 
or early in the morning. That means your person is diluting. How can you revive your person? By prayer. Prayer revive your relationship with God. Prayer revive your person, your hunger. When you go and pray and pray, you are putting yourself in the presence of God. You are putting yourself in the right place of God. You are putting yourself in the place that has the power of God. And that is why a lot of people, when they pray and pray and pray, their level of commitment rises. Hallelujah. Why? Because they have a right place. They have the presence of God. They have the peace of God. They have the provision of God. And they have the power of God. Why? Because of prayer. And when you reduce your prayer, you are mingled with wrong people at the wrong place, at the wrong time. And you are discussing, talking about something that is not good. Hallelujah. So that means your, your relationship is going down and down and down. Because you are no longer have the zealous. You are no longer have the commitment. You are no longer have the passion to have time with God. Hallelujah. Now, number four. Hallelujah. Prayer can heal the sick. Oh, we praise the name of Jesus. In those days, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to him and said, This is what the Lord says. Put your house in order because you are going to die. You will not recover. Hezekiah turned his face into the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion and have done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah. Go and tell Hezekiah, this is what the Lord, the God of your father David says. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will add 15 years to your life and I will deliver you and this city from the hands of the king Azariah. I will defend this city. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Do you know that prayer heal the sick and when the, all the doctors fail and everything fails hallelujah remember you still have prayer hallelujah the bible says the lord spoke to isaiah tell the king tell the king that uh, the sickness uh, on him he will bring death to his life so king Hezekiah turned to the wall and start to cry wailing and praying how how much do you love uh, God to touch your life. How much you want God to heal you. Okay? How much you have, you want the, the things of God in your life. How much? Hallelujah. Because the Bible says he turned to the wall and started to cry. Lord, can you remember the good things I have done? A lot of us that we are watching today, you have done a lot of good things. So when you start during COVID, when you start during this time, pandemic, during this time, the people are struggling. They are running to the right. They are running to the left. They are running forward. Some people, they, are, they run backwards. And some people, they just can't, they can't imagine what to do. Hallelujah. There is a big uh, dilemma. There is a big problem that we are facing today. But uh, we have one God that we can serve. There is a God that we can pray to. There is a God that can perform miracles. There is a God that is a miracle worker. Hallelujah. Before you close everything around you, before you give up to the devil, before you give up to the sickness, before you give up to the battle that you are fighting, remember, when God is with you, what else to say if God is on our side? And that is the God that I'm talking about this afternoon. Hallelujah. I don't care whether you test positive or you're already in the quarantine or you are still in isolation at home or any isolation centers right now. We need to believe in God. We need to have faith in God. We need to stand up and fight this COVID. We need to stand up and tell the Lord, I have faith in you. Your words speak to me. Your will must be done. If I need to repent, I will repent. If I need to come down on my knees, I will come down on my knees. Oh, hallelujah. We need to tell God that we made business. This is what Ezekiah did. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Remember, Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion 
and have done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Hallelujah. Most of the time we just pray with our, with our prayer, just full of words. Do we really repent? Hallelujah. Do we really come before the Lord and cry? And the Bible says, cry unto me, I shall answer you. Hallelujah. Lebo nangon nang sama sa tunga. Lebo nangon sa tubang aso na poso poso binaka. Sa pagkakang dapat dapat magkaralambo. Dapat na borit ko doon ka. Sa tubang aso na poso binaka. Meron ko rong doon. Meron ko rong binaka. But there is no really repent from our heart. I want to challenge our life today. Hallelujah. I want to challenge everyone that you are watching today and those of you that will watch later. Do we really repent and come before the Lord? Do we really mean what we say? Hallelujah. Because the Bible says, if someone is in Christ, he's a new person. The old things have gone. So no more drunkenness. No more stealing or thief. No more. The Bible says, those that uh, uh, commit adultery or fornication. No more idolatry. Adultery, idolatry. Fornication, same-sex marriage, or homosexual, two things. One is homosexual, you just want to be a woman when you're a man. You want to be a man when you're a woman. That's homosexuality. Hallelujah. You want to change your, your sexuality bigger because you want uh, uh, to be with the uh, with, uh, right people, according to you. But I want to tell you today, homosexual, adultery, fornication. And uh, even sodomites, hallelujah, sleeping, unnatural sex, unnatural sex, sex with animals, sex with uh, um, same, same sex uh, uh, marriage. No. The Bible says these people, they don't inherit the kingdom of God. So that's why it's very important when we pray and pray and pray and pray, God will give to us the wisdom. God will give to us the heavenly knowledge to know what is right what is wrong do not be fooled by the the press of this world you know the world will will tell you about the rights of a person oh i want to have my right i want to exercise my right but remember your right must have a responsibility you can't say my right and go and murder people because you say that's my right if somebody wrong to me i want to kill them i want to murder them no your right must be within the right of that everybody receive equal fare of being alive. So that's why when you make decision, remember, it's a decision that makes everybody equally survive. Hallelujah. And uh, it's a big, big challenge today because a lot of people, they want to use the, the right, what we call the human rights. We want to use that to bring in some... Uh, unethical, ungodly behavior. It's my duty as a man of God. It's my duty as the minister of the gospel to share with you today. Hallelujah. So when we talk about prayer can heal the sick, asking for healing through prayer. Prayers have healed many people. Prayer brings life, both physically and spiritually. James 5, 13, 14, 15. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing song of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Oh, hallelujah. Not only that prayer heal the sick, no. You can pray for God to forgive your sins. Wash away your sins. See, the powerful of uh, taking away the sin, then you can go to heaven. If you are healed, Jesus can heal you physically. But you are not, uh, you are not uh, making a decision for you to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Surrender everything to Jesus Christ. And I tell you, that God will open the doors when there is no door. God will provide the way when there is no way. 
Asking for healing through prayer. You can ask healing. You can ask restoration. Example. We must look at the people who are not going to be able to do it. We are not going to be able to do it. Testimony. Jesus healed a man who was told to die. On a Thursday night, my wife asked me to visit a friend because his wife was calling and crying on the phone. I went over. The man looked more dead than alive. The doctor had told the wife that her husband's kidney and lungs were failing and it did not look good. I was moved when I saw the children sitting around waiting for prayer and hoping for their father to be healed. We pray that Thursday night. And by Friday afternoon, the man's kidney was normal again. He spent two weeks in the hospital, recovering and learning how to stand and walk again. Hallelujah. And that can happen. Hallelujah. And that uh, man there is still here today. Hallelujah. It's just it's a story. When I came to the house, you can smell death. You know? And when you look at the children, they were crying, holding. But you can, by the way that you see that man, hallelujah, you know, in any minute, he will be called. And we pray. And when we, after we pray, I told them, tomorrow morning, go to hospital. We already pray. Hallelujah. Go to hospital for the doctor to look after the physical things. We already pray about the spiritual, cutting out, binding, cancelling the spirit of infirmity. And that's why, you know, I've done my part. That's why I'm encouraging the people, go and vaccinate. Vaccinate, why? Because that, if that is your part. I pray for people. But as soon as we pray and I'll ask them, go to the hospital, make sure that they will check you or diagnose. Hallelujah. And then you'll see the hands of God. It is our duty to do the physical things that God required us to do. Hallelujah. There are so many misinformation today and the people think that when you get vaccinated or you drink Panadol or some sort of medicine or that you don't trust God. No, you trust God, but you have to do your part. You trust God. I trust God, but you have to do my part. That's why we have a, a family a doctor in uh, Namua, in Suwa. His name is Dr. Oms. Normally we go there as a family and have our medical checkup. I pray for people. I've witnessed so many healing, healing from overseas, healing in Fiji. Pray for people in the island, Vanualeu, in Lotoka. I've, I've witnessed a lot of, uh, of healing, but does not take away the duty of the doctor and our duty that we have accountability and responsibility to look after the physical body because that, that body belongs to God. Hallelujah. Whoa. Just like when you want to educate yourself, you will go to school. You will not just stay at home and read the Bible and tell God to bless you with the Bible. Hallelujah. You just go and have your, or your Bible reading and that becomes your educational system. There are some churches like that. They don't send their children to school. Oh, what a sad news. Another five years time, ten years time. Hallelujah. What will happen to their children when they grow up? Hallelujah. Of course, we need education. Yes. At the same time, we also need God. While we, we are on the, this planet, our physical body is looked after by you, by me, by us. Because that is the gift of God to us. It does not belong to us. It belongs to God. And that's why I am very surprised with a lot of Taltala that they can't make a decision and encourage people, go and get a jab. Why? Because that is your responsibility to look after your body. Oh, some people say, oh, I'll just believe in God. Hallelujah. Well, if you do that, make sure, make sure that you spend a lot of time just praying to God. Hallelujah. Because God will tell you, go and get vaccine. It's been proven worldwide. Out of 73 died already. None of them, listen to this, none of them, that they've gone through the second jab. Maybe eight of them, they gone through the first jab, but the first jab was only mid-June, mid-June, which is uh, 14 days. Because 14 days, and then you have 21 days, and then you have all the days. So the immune system will, will work up. 
and become defensive in your, in your life. That is for the doctor to tell you. I have to tell you to use your brain, hallelujah, and make sure you walk on the surface of this planet. You are not in heaven. You are living here. So you need water. You need food. You need clothes. Hallelujah. We pray to God. We believe in God. But there are some elements of physical things that you provide the condition for his provision. Normally I speak on that every Monday. The conditions of calling God's blessing. Hallelujah. There was this walking stick in Moses' hand. He used that. Hallelujah. There was a trumpet in Joshua. He said, you people walk around Jericho. They have to walk around because that is the physical elements that Joshua and his army to do. See, God does not need that to walk around. Hallelujah. But why God tell them to walk around? Because we have a responsibility while we are living this physical. We need the obedience and discipline. If not, God will do everything and we don't enjoy the responsibility, the dominion that is given to us from Genesis chapter 1, 26, 27. That we might have the dominion over everything that was created. Oh, I love that. That you have to do your part. Hallelujah. It does not mean that God can't do it. No, God can do it. God can do everything. But because he already spoken, he already said, God said, let us make men in our image, our likeness, and to have a dominion over everything that he was created. See? The word of God already spoken. He cannot change it. Because if he changes it, he's a liar. And the Bible says, God is not a man to lie. So whatever he said, it will happen. When you follow the protocol of God, hallelujah, his word will perform in your life. So many people that uh, they want to, to spiritualize some physical activities you're supposed to do. Hallelujah. Don't just mingle with the people going to drink kava and smoke and you say that you always bring God. No. There are physical elements that we have to do. I have to do, you have to do. We have to do. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So that is number four. Hallelujah. Prayer can heal the sick. Asking for healing through prayer. Prayer have healed many people. Prayer brings life both physically and spiritually. Testimony we already heard. We pray that Thursday night and by Friday afternoon, the man's kidney was normal. After the doctor said that it's all fail. Not only the kidney. Hallelujah. Also his lungs. The kidney was affecting to the lungs. So one prayer. And I told them, go, go to the hospital. They spent two weeks in hospital. This man learned how to walk again. See, he learned how to walk again. Why? Because we need a physical elements before God's provision. Today, he's alive and well. Hallelujah. And he can be watching this program on television, or watching this program live on Facebook every Friday. Hallelujah. Number five, prayer can wash away our sin. Oh, glory to God. Prayer is very powerful because prayer can wash away your sin. Second Chronicles 7.14. Let us read together. Hallelujah. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn away from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Hallelujah. When we walk with God, prayer is very powerful because prayer can wash away your sin. How do prayer wash away your sin? Because you're confessing. You are coming to God with brokenness. That's why the Bible says, if my people who are called by myself, by my name, humble themselves. Hallelujah. The first thing that we need as a children of God, we must humble ourselves. We tell God that who, you, who he is in our life. We communicate with people and telling them, oh, my God is good. My God is good. My God is good. We trust in God in everything that we do. Everything that we do, we trust in God. Hallelujah. 
so many people that uh, God has done a lot of things in our life. But publicly you can't declare. Publicly you are not ashamed. You are ashamed of the gospel. Publicly you can't say to your friends. No, God heal you. God protects you. God open the door. God bless you. It is our duty to acknowledge God publicly. It is our duty to acknowledge God wherever we go. It is our duty to talk about God to the people that are close to us. If we are the minister of the gospel, oh, hallelujah, you can't hold back. There is a power, there is an energy that is in your life for you to move forward because God has done so many things in your life. Hallelujah. Prayer can wash away our sin. The Bible says, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray, the Bible says, and seek my face, turn away from their wicked ways. There are so many Christians praying today, but we are not humbling ourselves. There are so many people praying today, but we are seeking other, other face. We are not seeking God's face. Hallelujah. If you are seeking God's face, whoa, wherever we go, we'll feel the people are praying. In the village, you'll see people are praying and praying and praying. When you go past a house, a home, you'll see people that they are praying and praying and praying. Prayer is very powerful. Why? Because it can wash away our sin. When you feel that uh, your sin is forgiven, that is a sign that you trust in God. It's a clear sign that you are trusting in God. Regardless of what you're doing, you are trusting in God. Now, in Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, if my people who are called by my name, hallelujah, who are calling God's name, we, Christian, hallelujah, we, the Christian people, we're supposed to be different in our approach. The worship, the coming together um, in unity will be different level altogether. It will be a different level altogether. Hallelujah. People will see that a Christian are coming together, praying together. Don't worry about them. They don't have the key. Hallelujah. The key is with Christian, those that are called by my name. If my people who are called by my name, hallelujah, are you called by his name? Are you a Christian? And if you're a Christian, you're not supposed to be drinking cover. You're not supposed to be having a adultery or extramarital affairs or fornication. You're not supposed to have that because you are a Christian. There is a Christ-like. Christ becomes part of your life. So it's no longer you that live, that Christ lives in you. Hallelujah. How many times that when we share from this pulpit, maybe a lot of people, they, they want a, a lullaby preaching, lullaby preaching, a, a preaching that just talk to you about the good things, good things, good things. Well, it's good. But remember, the gospel is in two parts. One is good and one is a warning. Every scriptures are inspired by God. It's good for teaching, rebuking errors, correcting faults, preparing my servant for good living. That is the use that is the purpose. That's why we pray. Because every scriptures are inspired by God. It's good for teaching, rebuking errors, correcting faults, preparing servant of the Lord to do good, to do the best. And sometimes during this pandemic time, people, they can't step up. Hallelujah. People, they are so concerned about their image. People are so concerned what other people will say, what other pastors will say. I remember when we were Zooming with Taltalagase Turangabu, all the way from Riketi in Madhuata. Hallelujah. When he went and uh, uh, got his first jab, a lot of people, they are watching. Like there's a separation between those who have their jab and those that uh, does not have their jab. Hallelujah. Imagine that mindset. Hallelujah. We want everything to be easy. We want everything to be simple. We want everything to be put on our, on our plate. No. You have a responsibility. You have a calling in your life. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. We have a calling in our life. If my people who are called by my name, are you called on his name? Are you a Christian? Do you serve Jesus Christ? That, that means God is speaking to us today. Number two, 
My people who are called by my name will humble themselves. Andre mo bagalay mo na tamata ramusu. Andre mo bagalay mo na tamata talay rorao. Andre mo bagalay mo na tamata bagrongo. Andre mo bagalay mo na tamata eh kila tuko na poso ni kalu. Hallelujah. Dona ko sa dinu tuko na 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 acting commissioner of police. And bigyan ng sigla sa otin ito zoom tiko. Tuno ka sa relevu sa mga ibitin na lomala. That's what he said. It was replay again today. And he was saying during uh, uh, our Zoom Thursday this week, replay again today, 11 to 12. Do na kalle mo tubi ka na nito kay na lomada. Hallelujah. Maybe you are watching today. Do you have uh, any envy in your heart? Do you have any elements of jealousy in your heart? Do you have something in your heart that you look at somebody in a different way? Do I meet a dog in Dunaka? And the Palawa. Do I meet a man Dunaka? And the Dusia. Hallelujah. Commandant in Dusia, Commandant in Bosa. Let him have a little front yard, let him have a back yard. But if I give him another one, oh, Nando, Nalinga don't mean Dusiani. But we don't want to waste our time on the little things. We don't want to waste our time on. Somebody that is struggling in this life and very negative the way that he sees things. I want to challenge our life today. Fijians, especially Christian, that you are watching this program. The Bible says, my people who are called by my name, humble. We need humble heart. Remember Isaiah 66, verse 1 and 2. This is the person that I look to. This is the person that I esteem. This is the person that I desire. Those that are humble in their heart and contrite in their spirit and fear my word. Tolungana condition. Humble in their heart, contrite in their spirit, fear my word. You know when when you pray to God with a humble heart, God will answer your prayer. Do you know when you walk with God through humble heart? Hallelujah. Then you know the same of Jesus. You're not ashamed to be called a Christian. You're not ashamed to be attacked on social media. You are not ashamed that you are walking with God. Hallelujah. I was talking to Tal Talagasimus. Maybe some Tal Tal can come and, uh, and do live in, uh, in MDH because uh, of uh, the attack of uh, the people out there. Hallelujah. 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 Because the world will not, will not want you to deliver. Will not want you to be a source of blessings. Because we are a source of blessing to people. Similar to come into abundance. Malta da ba na? Don't don't alingana. Kawit ang nambula. Pinaka tango kami na drum drum buo to do to. Lago may dakin drum drum buo. Siro sa pira drum drum buo. Mawikin matau drum drum buo. All we see is drum drum buo. No. That's not what God said. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. I alone know the plan I have for you. Hallelujah. I alone knows the plan I have for you. The plan that I have for you is to prosper you. Never, never to harm you. And as we listen this afternoon, hallelujah, from the Heritage Department, from the Archives Department, CWM in hospital in, in Suba. If you are watching today, watching from your bed, whatever ward that you are in, Bulabinaka, FRU, HQ, Gordon Street, Works Department, Utility Department, and Fisheries Department, all in Walu Bay. Take this time. I believe the Word of God is challenging us. Oh, I tell you, my friend, the Word of the Lord remains, still remains, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Still remains. The Bible says, the word that I've spoken will come to pass. Hallelujah. You can be watching, you can be listening today. The word of God will come in, into your life and judges the desire of your heart. 
It, it checks the way that you go. It checks the, your, your honesty, your faithfulness. We can't run away from God because God is God. Hallelujah. We can't run away from God because God is everything. He's omnipotent, omnipotent and omnipresence and omniscience. That means he knows everything. Nothing can be hidden. Hallelujah. Ronizala talent a CCTV. But the eyes of God will never, will never change. The eyes of God will capture every secret, every hidden thing that you are operating on. So be rest assured, my friend, that you are watching our program today. Hallelujah. Power in prayer. There's something that God put aside for you. Do you know that God has a special place for you? Hallelujah. Not the retabinga. The Bible says, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just, and He will forgive us, our, forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. That is the promise of God. That is the word of God. So we are made right. Ooh, hallelujah. We are made right because of our prayer. It is our prayer that made us right. Because our prayer calls the presence of God into our life. God come into our life because of our prayer. So the more we pray, that I said before, the more we pray, we set the place, right place, right people, right topic. So your place matters because your place will have the presence, will have the power, will have the provision. That is the place that you go to. Not only that. Hallelujah. When you have the presence, when you have the power, when you have the protection, and then you have the provision. And of course you'll have the peace, the peace that you are searching for. The peace that the world cannot give it to you. Prayer can give it to you. Hallelujah. Because you know that when you pray, you are talking to God. Whenever you pray, you are talking to God. God is listening to your prayer. Do you believe that? You need to believe that God listens to your prayer. And when He answers, He can say, wait. He can say, now. And He can say, no. What you are asking for is not good for you. But what you are asking for, I will give it later. A little bit later. After one month, two months. Or what you are asking now, I will give it right now. God always answers prayer. We just have to have the patience to know and to, to understand that God is speaking to us. Oh, glory to Jesus. So number five, if you confess our sin, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all our righteousness. Okay. If we confess our sin, that's the first one, the he is faithful and just and forgive us of our sin. So, you need to confess your sin. Then, hallelujah, then the forgiveness will come from all your sins and purify. Oh, hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? I'm really blessed with uh, this word. I'm really blessed with this topic. Maybe because I pray a lot. Hallelujah. It gives me energy, gives me power, gives me strength to listen. That the word that spoken in the Bible is very powerful. Very powerful, very dynamic. And we know that's where God moved in the direction of his word. So when you believe in his word, I come to give life. Yes, life abundantly. Life abundantly. According to the word of God. It is God who is saying that. Not me. Not you. God is saying that. So, when we confess our sin, purify us 
from all our righteousness. All our sin will be cleared. All the sin that we that we've done will be cleared. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? All your sin from the time that we are sitting here from the studio and the time that you're watching from there, right goes back to the time that you were born. Hallelujah. All those sins, unconfessed sin, the sin that you will, maybe you've forgotten. No, God will not forget anything. So the first thing that our sin is forgiven. And the Bible says, then he purify us from our evil or unrighteousness. it is our duty to pray. It is his duty to answer. That's not your problem. That's not your calling. You just pray and believe that God will perform miracle. That's it. So many times in our walk with God, we are caught up by our pride. But I'm standing here asking every one of us that we must come to God and ask for repentance. That we are sinners and fall short of His glory. My people who are called by my name, humble themselves and pray. Hallelujah. My people who are called by my name. Kuri nungu to matar sa pagayat ni Nelam. Kuri ko meramasu. Kuri ko meramawo mulmulu tigira. Hallelujah. I want to challenge our life. Hallelujah. We can the baro to my valley. So to my valley. So I said that I got tico. So baro to my bonotani. You member of NCF or or not in the immaterial. This is the time that we stand together and believe in God. This is the time to walk together and believe in God. Because the Bible says, when we come together in unity, God command blessings. God command blessings. So, I believe that God will perform miracles. I believe God will heal somebody this afternoon. I believe God will restore relationship between husband and wife or between the parents and the children. God can do anything because he is God. So, I want to challenge our life today. My people who are called by my name. Forget about what church you belong to. Forget about the Taltawa. Forget about the name of the church. You make sure that you clear your mind, clear your heart. That you don't envy any person around you. You don't envy any church that flourishes, any church that is doing good. Sometimes we are caught up with that political um, competition of being a church. We want to be the best church. We want to be the church that all people look up to us. No. We want to be a church that Jesus called us to be. Hallelujah. We don't want to compete with other people. We don't want to compete with other, with other tal -tal. We don't want to compete with other church and ministry. We are here on the calling of God. That we are limited time here on this, on this planet. So we have to do our duty. We have to surrender our life. We have to give everything to God. We have to commit everything to God. You are listening from Samsabu. Listening from... Uh, Lord, are you listening from Tabiuni? It's about time that you take away all the little things about your life and look at the big picture that you are the child of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Then your God will never leave you nor forsake you. This God will be with you every day of your life. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. We will continue as we come next week. Hallelujah. Friday, time like this today is uh, 
16th. So it'll be 23rd next week. Hallelujah. And this is the time to come together and pray together. We are trying to roster some Lulil Manua, some Taltawa, some government workers. This is the time. Don't look at the political side. Don't look at uh, the, the things of this world that we take sides. We belong to this uh, Tikina. We belong to this Asar. No. This is the time that people love God. They must come together. When they come together, they trust God together. That God will do some miracle signs and wonders. And that's what will happen this afternoon when I pray from here. And some of you are receiving your healing right now. Whether a common flu or whether it's a COVID-19. Any sign of COVID-19 or any things that are affecting your body right now. Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I speak against sickness. The spirit of infirmity, I bind it right now. The spirit of death and hell, I bind it right now. The spirit of pride and arrogance, I bind it right now. Right now, right now. And I cast it to the lake of fire. Right now, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I pray over financial needs. I pray over uh, their house, their car, their furnitures. Thank you, Father God. There are so many people that they are listening and watching, both on television and also on Facebook. I pray that they will see the power, the strength of the gospel that is being preached and shared from this platform. I thank you, Father God, for this afternoon. I thank you so much because your word becomes a light to our feet and a lamp to our path. Nobody will say, I will never give me. Without your word, we'll be in darkness. Without your word, we don't know where we'll end up. To. Without your word, we'll be confused and walking around in circle. Thank you for your word that you teach us and guide us today. Thank you for those that surrender their life. Those that have come and hands up to you right now. And they want to follow you and to become a Christian. Thank you, Father God, for their life wherever they are. Thank you, Father God, for opening the doors opening the valley, opening the villages, opening the company. We thank you, Father God. We say stop it to the COVID-19 and the spread, all the virus. We say stop it right now. We command the stop in Jesus' name right now. We thank you. We give you the glory and the honor and the praises. Lord, to be yours and yours alone. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray and everyone say amen and amen. Hallelujah. Na pagkatao mo naman nga buwan ng kaluwa na sigurin na ni Kua. Hallelujah. Pagkatao mo tali. Pagkatao mo naman nga tuwa na sema tingo mai. Business house. My inheritance. Archives. CWM. IFRU. Works department. Walupe. Utilities. Walupe. Fisheries. Walupe. FNU. Samambula Hostel. We take this time to say another one. Pinang nga pagkatao mo. Thank you for tuning in this wonderful afternoon. We pray that God will continue to bless you. If you are watching from overseas, Middle East, African continent, from Europe, thank you so much. We thank you. So we thank the team here, the MPET uh, uh, media team and also the executive uh, manager uh, that they are looking after this room. The uh, studio in Turek in Suba. We say thank you. Stay safe, stay connected in Jesus' name. Amen.